Welcome to week five of the ADHD Go webinar series. This week we'll be covering uh, the material in the home module of the ADHD Go course, which will help you organize your home so that you can go out into the world and succeed like a big powerful champion. So we are talking about how the home is really a cluster of stimuli that influences how you think and how you feel and everything that you go forward and do and how you prepare yourself to go out into the world. The home is like an extension of your mind and it says a lot about your relationship with yourself and your values and obviously the relationships with the other people who share your home with you. So it's, a, it's important to understand that in your home, you are more able than anywhere else to regulate the different kind of distractions and stimuli you're dealing with. So make sure that you are consciously diminishing the distractions and increasing the kind of stimuli that will help put you uh, in motion towards beneficial, productive behaviors that make you feel good about yourself. So this is a place where you can practice who you want to be at your best when you go out into the world and then there's actually stress you can't control. But because you've spent some time practicing within your home, uh, you're going to be better equipped to deal with that stress and be your best self. In the home, there are several responsibilities. They're certainly not all listed here, but I tried to make a comprehensive list of the kinds of things that you're going to want to be aware of um, to take care of in the home. I'll just go through them briefly to explain what each one is. Emergency preparedness is, of course, having things on hand that are going to help you in an emergency. And that's everything from goods like flashlights, extra water, candles, uh, batteries, potentially some canned food, to also the plans for what to do in an emergency, for where your family wants to meet if you know the house is on fire or there's a flood or any kind of situation that you could imagine uh, being prepared for, create a plan and make sure that you share that with everybody in the home. Personal finances. This is just really a matter of getting your personal finances organized. So having a filing system so that you can access those easily and uh, frequently enough to always know what the, what the big picture on your finances looks like. And also have a plan for increasing your finances, savings, and some kind of uh, you know retirement fund, some kind of savings for emergencies, that sort of thing. So get your personal finances in order. Insurance and security. This uh, is not only your insurance for medical, uh, your car, your life insurance, um, but it's also things like security cameras, having a safe, a, a dog, and potentially uh, some kind of a weapon, even if that's just mace, but it's very prudent to have some kind of a weapon also on hand in case uh, an emergency should befall where you would need it. Next is transportation. How you get places is obviously a big responsibility and making sure you get to those places when you need to be there. So making sure that you are car has a reliable maintenance schedule, you're able to afford gas and oil for it, you have the public transportation schedules available, you know which bus lines service the places that you need to go, um, and perhaps you have a bike, rollerblades, any form of transportation, and keeping those things in order. Next is entertainment and electronics. This really revolves a lot around just making sure that your, um, your entertainment needs and your electronics are con continually updated to meet whatever your personal needs are. That usually means subscriptions uh, are being paid and updates to software are being done on a consistent basis. Uh, backing up photos, those sorts of things. 
Next is health and cleanliness. Obviously, it's important to have regular checkups for your medical, your dental, vision, and also hygiene. As we've talked about before, cleanliness is next to godliness. It's a reflection about your relationship with yourself, and it is also going to keep you healthier and make you feel better if you are clean, not stinky, and well-pressed. Next, we've got child care. Um, taking care of your kids obviously is um, parts of these all relate to it but making sure that you know when you can get a babysitter how much that's going to cost establish that relationship um, making sure that you have strong bonds with your community because those kids are going to often need to rely on neighbors know who those people are who which houses are safe that sort of thing um, make sure that their needs are met and that you have a plan for their continuing education. Um, friendship and romance. Uh, this is really just a broad way of thinking about other people and doing things on a regular basis that make those people feel special and deepen those bonds. And it's a two-way street. So just have a plan for how you uh, want to Show your friends and your significant other with actions that you care about them on a regular basis. So put a few of those on the calendar uh, as part of your, your home responsibilities and maintaining strong, intimate relationships with people. Spiritual and intellectual growth. Maybe you get some of this from going to a religious organization or uh, some kind of volunteering but anything that involves self-actualization is really gonna provide the fulfillment of this home responsibility. Ongoing education for yourself can be a very powerful way to do that. And anything that helps you explore life's big questions and get answers to how you feel about your place in the world and some security in those answers for yourself. And the last one on the list is, of course, recreation. Um, I recommend getting passes to things like state parks or national parks, um, getting equipment that is good for your hobbies, whether that's working out or painting or music, um, but getting that equipment and having the money available to do that. And then also designating time for recreation and relaxation is very important. So. All of these things need a place on the calendar for planning. It's a lot, so make sure that you break it up. Um, but these are all things that you should have a foundational plan in place with uh, as soon as possible. Organization is really about making a plan to get started. First, think about the things that you are trying to organize. These can broadly be divided into things like clothing, food in the pantry, um, toys, documents, any kind of paper that you're wanting to file, and spaces. Your physical space, usually in your home or at your workplace, can also be organized. So make a plan for those things. As far as space goes, Think about dividing your space in relation to the work that's going to be performed in that space. I like to think about Bruce Wayne and Batman. Bruce Wayne, the millionaire, uses Wayne Manor to be a billionaire, millionaire, whatever. He, but he uses this to, to just inhabit the role of rich philanthropist. Whereas below in the bat cave, he's got all his surveillance equipment and all his bat toys. And it's a very different vibe down there. It's dark and the focus is on his electronics and his gadgets for crime fighting. So it's a totally different space with a totally different aesthetic, different visual cues. And in a similar way, you can be dividing the spaces in your home to perform best for different tasks and put you in that mindset. Um, for items and also papers, keep in mind that everything has a place. I used to live on a boat and if things weren't in their particular spot, they would be constantly knocked off the shelves and flying everywhere when a big gust of wind hit the boat. So that really taught me that everything has a place even single pieces of cutlery a knife a fork this particular fork goes in this particular place
that should be it should be a very detailed way and the more often you use things the more it should have a special place for it keys wallet um, your what whatever it is whatever is important your phone maybe those should only go in particular places all the time so you are less likely to lose those things and try to expand that habit of having a special place out to more and more items in your home keep things in sight that you use often this is this is for things that like your treatment notebook and other other things that you're using often that don't contribute to visual clutter so that's a big differentiation that's a big caveat here everything that's not for the task you're working on should be put away and out of sight so it doesn't sap your energy from being visual clutter but the things that you're using often um, keep them out so this is especially true of things in the pantry where you have perishable foods the things that are going to be perishable make sure that those things are in front of everything else so that you can remember to use those more quickly so they don't spoil next we'll talk a little bit about your wardrobe and again we've talked about the hanger trick but um, in your wardrobe Another great way to save yourself some decision-making fatigue is to organize your clothing type by color um, and then go through and also throw out things again like the hanger trick that you aren't using. Go through and understand, ask yourself does this fit? Is, does it have some sentimental value? Will I need it in the future? Um, for example, a suit, you might need it for a wedding coming up. Um, and again, go through the questions of how do you want people to think of you when they see you? How does your appearance reflect that? And what kind of organizational structure would be beneficial to me in my wardrobe? So those are some ways to get started thinking about organization. And we'll get into a little bit more of those rules in the next slide, clutter. Again, visual clutter is stuff that's around that creates stress and saps energy because it's just little stuff on your desk or on the table or on the floor even, on chairs, that your eyes constantly are are sort of resting on and you think again like what's in that pile what are those things and if it's a clean space then you don't have that extra those extra loose ends of thoughts kind of tugging at your attention throughout the day so make sure that you get rid of visual clutter and only have the things out that are required for your current project next is spot cleaning it can be very daunting to uh, to try to clean up your entire house and so sometimes that causes us not to want to start so make sure that you t tackle all of your problems in the smallest possible chunks so you're sure to do something and that's where spot cleaning comes in just commit to doing 10 minutes a day at the end of your work day or whenever but fit in 10 minutes and this is not to get the cleaning done this is just to feel good about the fact that you did something and oftentimes that 10 minutes will pass and now you're in the flow and you end up cleaning the whole room but that's not the goal it's just to get you started and to make you feel good about having a small win and being productive in that way it's important to set standards for how clean or how messy untidy you will allow your house to become before you must take action and the higher those standards are the better and the more high status you'll feel which is generally a good thing next is dividing the space getting back to chunking the problem you can do that with the physical space so um, start by taking out the trash and putting all of the clutter in a bin or out of the room now that you have a fairly clean space, you can work around the room 
in a clockwise manner, starting in a corner and going around the room in a clockwise manner and doing, you know, wiping down things for dust, uh, sweeping underneath furniture, that sort of thing. Then you can bring that clutter back in and make sure it gets its own special space and you sort of declutter those things, which is generally the hardest part is all our knickknacks. Next is the clutter decision. So when the moment comes uh, to put something in its proper place or to just put it wherever is most convenient and within the arm's reach, that's the clutter decision. That's a crossroads moment for clutter. And so it's important to recognize that decision and then take the extra few seconds to put something in its place. There's a common, uh, there's a common uh, thing that happens to uh, atypical people, which is we have no problem hunting for something and searching for what we need for a half an hour but we won't take the extra 10 to 30 seconds to put it in a place where it would have been easy to find. That's, that's a struggle for us. So recognize those decisions when you are at that crossroads and choose to put things in their proper place. Um, I often think about prioritizing what I actually need um, to reduce what becomes clutter in the first place. So when I get something, I like to think, okay, if my house was burning down or if I was being chased and I needed to start a new life elsewhere, under those circumstances, do I actually need this thing? Is this critical to my survival? And the answer is universally no. I don't need this thing, so things that you don't need or are broken or just have a passing sentimental value, that's almost always in the donate or trash pile. Uh, so next is organizing your papers. As I talked about, we are so good at looking for things and committing to spend the time to look for something, but not great at spending the time to file something in the proper organized place to begin with. And that's truer nowhere else than in your important papers file. Make sure that you create uh, a set of files, digital and, uh, and paper, with clear tabs of categories for what they are. Some examples could be your education papers, your finances, your hobbies, your vision board. Those are just some examples of, of a few tabs you can have. And make sure you also have one folder in there that I call the action file. The action file is a file of important papers that you can take with you, for instance, to the bank or to the school and, and then use your papers and have them organized. The things that, are, that, are, that travel with you, those go in the action file. And maybe that's a red file. It's always important to color code things to make them a little bit easier to, uh, to identify and a little bit more fun. So next, when you're organizing items, um, I kind of sort my items quickly into four categories. Two categories, really. There's discard and keep. But to break it down a little further, the four categories I like to go with are give it away. So I think about who could use this and give it to them because one man's trash is another man's treasure and you, can, you probably know someone or could easily find someone who can use the thing that you're not really using anymore. Next is replace it. So if you get something new, get rid of something old. If something is not functioning, properly or um, it's not it's it needs to be updated get rid of that thing and replace it with a new thing it's gonna make your life better and it's always nice to have a new thing um, and when you do replace it try to get a try to shop for quality even if it's a little bit more expensive it tends to be that the higher quality thing will last longer and you'll get more value out of it that's definitely not always possible and I understand that but um, be on the lookout for the times when it is possible because it's definitely going to pay off in the long run. Next is storing it. So 
if you really if you really have a sentimental attachment to something but you're not going to use it then clear plastic bins with labels are like the filing cabinet of things of non-paper things so um, get some of those maybe get a storage space or if you have a basement or something then put it down there Christmas decorations um, anything with a purely sentimental attachment maybe you need to store it that's fine and finally, but recognize those are the things that you leave behind in a fire, <laughs> probably. Um, and then the last one is toss it, just throw it away. Um, I like to think about Marie Kondo's uh, qualifying question, does it spark joy? And anything else, throw it away. Um, and again, my Marie Kondo question is, do I need it for survival? And again, the only thing that I need for my survival is me. So I, I am not trying to develop an emotional attachment to just stuff. Um, it's just me and my family. That's the most important priority. Next, we have the magic bin. And this is great, especially if you want to give yourself some accountability to clean your house by, say, putting some pressure on yourself by inviting friends over to hang out or have dinner, then you'll want to clean up your house before they get there so that it looks nice and you can have a, a real chill time hanging out. So, um, but you might find yourself panicking like, oh, there's so much to do, there's so much cleaning. Take everything that's on your desk, on your shelves, whatever, whatever clutter you have and put it all in a bin with a lid on it an opaque bin with a lid on it. A trash can, one might call it. But don't throw it away just yet. Just keep it in there for the evening, hang out with your friends, have your good time, and then when they go, you can pull all that clutter back out and put it exactly where it was. But you might find that actually you don't miss that stuff, and you can just leave it in the trash can, put it out by the curb for pickup. Um, and maybe, or maybe you find that it's 20% of the stuff that you really are attached to and you really wanna pull back out. And when you pull it back out, that also gives you an opportunity to handle those things again, decide if it's clutter, and then put those things in their own special places. Next is mental clutter. So this is just about compartmentalizing your thoughts so that you're always fully present and engaged no matter what role and what what role you're in and what task you're being asked to perform. So just make sure that you are able to go from work to home or from home to social environments or wherever and compartmentalize those different roles so you're not bringing a lot of uh, excess thoughts and uh, your inattentiveness starts to creep in because you're thinking about things that aren't related to actually where you where you are so try to recognize mental clutter and really compartmentalize um, your present moment from the other roles in your life so that stress doesn't creep in the last one on this list is digital clutter, and this is becoming more and more difficult. It's something that you gotta clean out just like everything else. So this is about turning off notifications on your phone. I hate having notifications going on in the middle of the night. My phone lights up. Um, so I, I hate having notifications in general. I only have them on for super important, you know, for, for messages, that's it and I turn those off occasionally as well. Next, delete old contacts. You don't want to have your phone book full of old contacts that you never use. Ex-lovers that are every time you scroll by them in your contact list you're getting an emotional kind of response. Um, any unused apps, get rid of those. Um, I even tried for a while setting my phone to silent and all the colors to grayscale, which is an option in the accessibility options, and I was amazed by how much less stimulating and enticing my phone became just from doing that. Uh, so that's another thing that I recommend to kind of uh, protect your dopamine and not let the intentional programming of the phone work its magic on you to stimulate you and release dopamine and make it more and more addictive. Try to take some of that power back away from the phone. Make it less fun. Um, 
and the last one is uh, also on your desktop on your computer just make sure that that's not cluttered and not full of random files that you've downloaded put all those in a file get them off your desktop and declutter your digital space losing things is next and of course this uh, can happen a lot when you've got a really cluttered space and you're not putting things in their proper place it's carelessness and carelessness is increased by stress so you misplace things when you're stressed or distracted because the stress prevents you from giving sufficient attention to what you're doing and where you're putting things. So when you set down something important, make sure to quickly note the objects around it and maybe what their color is. And that's going to help you make a solid memory of where did I put this down. But the most important thing if you're in a familiar place is have a place for each of your things. You only put your phone here and there, those two places in your house, that's it. So you look for them there. If it's not there, thank God we have Find My Phone, but this can apply, this rule can apply to everything that you might lose. Um, some common things, some common reasons for losing things. Of course, we talked about stress. Um, that stress can be because you're late for something. You got distracted by something. Um, Sometimes it could be because you didn't use a list to help you remember. So you're stressed about trying to remember things that are sort of fading from your memory. So have a list and you'll get less stressed and you'll be less likely to lose or forget things. And then, um, and then uh, multitasking can also be another reason why it's easy to lose things because we're trying to do too many things at once we're overstimulated and so we don't have enough attention for what we're doing and where we're putting important objects electronic trackers like find my phone but they also have uh, small tiles that you can put on your key ring and other important things that can make them trackable and those can be really handy and the last one this is especially true of keys and lists but making copies of things really helps take away the stress of losing things it's not like now you can just lose things as often as you want and you should feel free to be careless but making copies takes that stress away and uh, doesn't make it a huge um, a huge hindrance in your day when you do lose something that you have a copy of okay next is finances and time and the first the first uh, and these are of course related people say time is money and that is definitely true although sometimes um, sometimes it can feel like your time isn't worth anything when you're just spinning your wheels um, but think about the way how you spend time corresponds to the money that you have available because um, obviously those things are linked uh, one thing that's very important in that regard for atypicals is to really be able to remain aware of the passage of time. Um, so the next three tasks that you do that are chores like cleaning or cooking, shopping, exercising, but the three, the next three recurring tasks that you do, time how long it takes you to do those things then maybe set up a, a timer for next time and get better at estimating exactly how long things take use a playlist i make a playlist on spotify of a, you know however many songs is going to fill 15 minutes or an hour however long my task is going to take and then i can recognize oh that song is halfway through the playlist and i bring my awareness back to the passage of time and how long i have left to finish my task and then setting screen time limits can be great if you're very distracted by apps um, like social media and games screen time limits can be great but you have to respect them and understand that that's a friendly thing that future you set for you it's not something that you should be ignoring and it's not something that you should feel completely chastised and limited by but uh, it is it's something that is a great and healthy reminder for you to see how much time you are actually spending on those things one last thing 
the next item on the list, thinking before you go out or before you switch tasks, oh, I'll just do one last thing. I'll just, I'll just do this. I'll just finish this last thing real quick. Avoid that whenever you can. Recognize when you're doing that because that is the seductive power of hyperfocus. And doing that one last thing, it, when you know you need to switch, is going to lead to rushing, stress, and careless mistakes. It's not going to turn out well. So one way to prevent this, first of all, learn to recognize when you're saying one last thing. And second of all, set two alarms. One alarm to wrap up and one alarm to say, this is the hard finish for, uh, for my time on this task. Next, finances are tough. So get help with finances. That can be banking apps like Acorns, Mint. Most banks have pretty great apps now that visualize your finances with charts. Um, a savvy significant other can really help this, get somebody to help you with it who's in the family, or a financial advisor, somebody you pay to take care of this stuff for you. Um, but whatever you do, if you're struggling with your finances, that's going to be a huge amount of stress in your life that's going to prevent you from making positive changes in most places. So just get that taken care of. Get help because this is a struggle for most atypicals and that's, uh, that's fine. <laughs> we can get better. Um, next one is thinking about money like fun tickets. Sometimes money can seem like uh, a really scary kind of a kind of a thing. Numbers, abstractions, um, debt. But uh, think about think about it like something that's actually just a ticket to do a magic ticket to do what it is that you want, and take some of the negative connotations associations away from money as the root of all evil because then you'll tend to avoid it um, which which doesn't help next um, yeah money comes when we're not worrying about it so just examine your relationship with money the last one on here is external focus when you're thinking only about yourself you'll get depressed when you start to think about others and the world outside of you and you'll find abundance and that might that is maybe corny to say but that's the truth focusing on yourself makes your world very small focusing on everything outside yourself and how you can help um, other people and the the community that's what's really going to make you useful interesting and not depressed because you won't have time to think about your small personal hardships which seem so all-consuming when you're really focused on yourself okay next we have chores a big uh, a big scary one um, so getting started with chores um, it, it can it can seem difficult sometimes but really it's about focusing on the good feelings of satisfaction that you'll have from finishing the chores so uh, having a clean house when your house is clean uh, take a picture of it and go back to that picture when the house is dirty so not only you have a reference point for what clean looks like but you can identify with wow that looks great that's the kind of house that I want to be in it's gonna make you feel good about yourself um, another thing that can help the next one here is task circuits so breaking things down into small chunks again um, we tend to get sucked in so it can help to move quickly between tasks um, and it will help you get accustomed to breaking away from one task and knowing that you can come back to it and after you do a circuit refocus so maybe first I declutter shelves for 15 minutes then I do dishes for 15 minutes and then I sweep for 15 minutes and I'm gonna do three circuits going between these things and again maybe I have a playlist that goes for 15 minutes or even for that full 45 minute circuit and that's how I know to keep switching and when one of those circuits is done I can take a five minute break you know maybe take a little walk um, yeah 
however I want to reward myself. But those task circuits can help not only with switching, but chunking the tasks so they're a little bit more manageable. Next, cleaning. Again, remove trash and clutter first. Go clockwise, starting with one of the corners around the room. Laundry. Make sure that you keep the laundry off the floor and move it into one place, one, one place in the house uh, so that you can find it all, it's all gathered, and do your laundry once a week. Make sure that it's got time on the calendar that you know you can devote to it, and enjoy that time by uh, doing the laundry while you watch a show or, or listen to a podcast. Um, you can be folding and catching up on... Uh, on a show and it makes it really makes the time pass but it's something that we all have to do but like the financial advisor this is also something that you could uh, you could theoretically outsource this task to someone else you could have someone do your laundry for you and that's also an acceptable solution if it's too much stress for you if this is something that you absolutely hate doing then this is something that you can pay someone else to do for you if if you have the means and so all these things are related and there's multiple ways to solve all of these uh, problems or obstacles next is meal planning I think there's several things to go over. So with um, in the first place, you need to understand what are my dietary needs, what meals work for my tastes and my family's tastes. So write down your top five to 10 most delicious and simple recipes. Then use those recipes as your um, jumping off point to make a shopping list for when you go to the grocery store. Now make copies of that shopping list. Keep one in the kitchen and one in your car and one on your phone. And now you can't lose that shopping list and it's always with you when you're at the grocery store. I also recommend putting a couple reusable shopping bags uh, in the trunk of your car so you've always got that available and you can't forget those. Um, then uh, another couple quick things about meal planning. Uh, we'll, we'll get to those in the dietary section. So uh, we'll move on to shopping for now. Shopping, again, reusable shopping bags in the car and um, make sure that you don't shop hungry that can often cause us to make impulsive decisions that we wouldn't normally make. Um, but you know, sometimes it happens. Go shopping with someone so that you stay on track and they can uh, help you with decisions if, if, that's, uh, if that's useful for you. And also you can split up what needs to be done so maybe you could do the shopping a little bit more quickly. Then you'll notice that the most grocery stores are broken down with the fresh stuff on the perimeter and the manufactured and processed foods are in the middle of the store in the aisles. So the deli, the fruit and produce, um, uh, all of those fresh sort of things, the dairy, those are all going to be around the perimeter of the store. So shop around the perimeter to make the healthiest choices. Then before you check out, look at your cart and think about what you'll be eating for the next week based on what is in there. Just check, check to make sure that you're happy with what's in there, that you could mentally build some meals around what you see. What's the protein? What's the vegetable? What's the grain? That's an easy, that's an easy way to, uh, to think about balanced meals. Next is storage. And this is uh, specifically about food for the most part again. Organize your food by frequency of use. Like I said, perishable things and things that you use often should be in your line of sight and easy to grab. Check what's in the back, again, to prevent um, anything from collecting dust or spoiling. And everything should have a place so you can sort food quickly. Each shelf in your pantry should be designated for a certain type of food or cooking implement. If you can, get a large fridge with roll-out shelves and use clear plastic containers in those to keep things visible. And then finally, uh, 
you can make a diagram of where you're storing food in your kitchen. Just quickly sketch out um, the places that you can store food in your kitchen and what would be convenient to have in each of those places. And then it'll be a lot easier to remember even if you, even if you throw the schematic away. Cooking is, uh, you start with the next, the next, uh, the next one on our list is cooking. So start by organizing your ingredients, chopping them up and prepping them. Then put those prepped ingredients into your little bowls so they're all separated and ready to cook and combine. And once once you've started the cooking process, just remember to enjoy yourself and take your time with this because it's fun. It's a creative process and eating is great. It's one of the it's one of the greatest joys in life. So be tasting things frequently and find out what you like and really learn to love cooking because again, it's one of the most important things that life has to offer and um, being being decent at it can really be a rewarding part of your life. Just don't rush yourself through it. And, uh, and throw something in the microwave every night. Next, cooking shortcuts. Um, you can get bagged salad that's been pre-washed. Pre-cut veggies are great for some people who don't like to do the, the mise en place. Frozen or canned veggies, pasta and bread are always quick to grab. Um, you can do breakfast for dinner. That's always great if you wanna do something quick. Hard boiled eggs are a quick treat to just grab and go from the fridge. Uh, to start your day. And then uh, having some kind of vegetable chopper or food processor can also really cut down on your prep time. Um, we had tamales a few days ago and that's another great food because it's already in a package. You can put it in your pocket and go. You can freeze them. I like to, I like to make a big batch of curry or some kind of a sauce for pasta and then put that in the freezer so that we have food for the whole week that we can just unthaw and put on top of pasta or rice or whatever grain we're making. So those are all good cooking shortcuts. And then finally the cleanup for your food. Um, of course, clean the fridge and the pantry regularly. So just throw away things that are spoiled or, or that you'll know you'll never eat. And then when you're actually cooking, clean up as you go because it is very difficult to do dishes when the sink is already full of dishes. So, and you'll be that much closer to just relaxing when you're done with the meal. Some households, one person cooks and the other person cleans up, um, but that doesn't always work out. And I always find it easier to clean up, especially the big pots, knives, and cutting boards as things are simmering on the stove. So clean up as you go. All right, so that pretty much takes us to the end of the home treatment uh, tactics. Now let's talk a little bit about the home treatment plan. The big, the big two things that I want you to focus on for your home treatment plan is one distraction that you could diminish in your home uh, that could be noise, lots of TV, um, laying in bed and making the bedroom uh, you know, too comfortable to, to be in there during the daytime. Figure out why you want to address this, what you want the change to be, and then think, okay, what tactics can I use based on the triggers, the reasons I do this, and why I want to modify that, that distraction or behavior in my home? What tactics could I use to address that? Then secondarily, you can just look at an area for improvement in your home. And this goes back to our responsibilities at home, like uh, our finances, our electronics, our, um, our security. Any one of these areas uh, or responsibilities, how could you improve how prepared you are in that area? Write down a reason you want to improve, how, how you'd like that change to look, and then some tactics that you can use to address that, uh, that area for improvement. Okay, with that, we are at the end of the content for the ADHD home module. So I'll take any questions you have. First, I'll 
response to the questions that are received by email and then we'll take questions from the group chat and with any time left we'll talk about what's on your mind so let's begin with the first round of questions <laughs> 